Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we are doing the January repurchase review. So if you're new here, what that is, is I go through all of the products I featured on my channel in that month, so January in this case, and whether I'd repurchase them again or not after I've had a little bit more time with them. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with the new brushes that I featured on my channel this month. We're starting off with the Cherry Blossom brushes from Ihoto. So, well, one's a cherry blossom, sorry. We've got the cherry blossom and the peony. So these are from Ihoto. They're very soft, very nice. You know, are these a must have? No, they're not. This is a splurge item. If you're looking for something with beautiful engraving, these are great options. So I personally would purchase them again, but are, is it something that, you know, I think everybody has to have in their collection? No. Likewise, we have the Beautylish Lunar New Year brush for the year of the rabbit. And I have to say, I really love this brush. And I don't think everybody needs to necessarily have this brush in their collection either. This is another luxury item. However, if you are looking for a brush this shape, this is kind of like, you know, your like Z1 powder size and things like that from Chikahoto. So Beautylish has been putting out the same brush shape essentially, you know, every year for the Lunar New Year. So if one of those designs appeals to you, I think it's a great one. Personally, I think this Year of the Rabbit one is the best one so far. I'm very happy I have it and I am actually thinking of picking up another one while I can uh, for a friend. So yeah, I love this. I mean, look at the beautiful colors on here. And you can see that when I turn it, it kind of has like a little bit of an iridescent quality to it. So I absolutely love this design and yeah, super soft. So you can use this for like powder or blush, you know, if you prefer a bigger blush brush, you know, anywhere on the face. So, but it is powder products only. And then the other brushes that we featured were the Sonia G Kiyaki Niji and Buffer brushes. So these were actually sent to me and you know, I think if you use the Niji brush a lot, the Niji Pro, this is it's slightly different because, you know, this is dyed go hair whereas the Niji Pro is a mix of dyed and undyed, but this is a really great bronzer brush. If you're somebody who uses bronzer a lot and you go kind of all over your face with it and so forth, I think this is a great brush. Do you need this and the Niji Pro? No, it depends if you're somebody who travels a lot. This would definitely be handy for traveling. I think it's a great brush. On the other hand, the buffer brush, this is a great in-between size brush between the Buffer Pro or the former face one and the smooth buffer. So the bristles here are a little bit longer. Here is, this is the Buffer Pro or the old face one. You can see that lengthwise or looking at about the same as the face one here but it's gonna be much smaller. And if you're looking at the smooth buffer, you can see we've got the same diameter as that, but it is going to be taller. So um, yeah, I mean, the diameter is just about the same. This actually seems ever so slightly larger diameter than the smooth buffer. But if you look at these together, this is kind of like your best in-between brush. So if you don't have any of the buffer brushes and you've been wanting to invest in one, this might be your best option because with the size difference here, the length of the br bristles, you know, gives you a little bit more flow. Uh, you know, it's not gonna be as dense of a buffer. So it's really great for a variety of different purposes, uh, face powder, blush, so forth. All of these can be used for those same things. So do you need it if you have the other two? If their brushes you use a lot, might be a good idea. Otherwise, you know, this would be a great starting brush for somebody who is interested in this shape, in my opinion. So personally, those were sent to me, but I had actually ordered my own set already. They are ones that I would repurchase again. Moving on, we have the Guerlain Red Vanda. This is the case and the lipstick here. And this is 770V and yeah, I mean, it's a really beautiful red. I think this is a great red. Um, I love this case. This is velvet and I think it looks better in person. If you order from the Guerlain website, you can get things actually engraved for free, the case. Uh, so yes, I would purchase this again. I love the Guerlain lipsticks and I think that their reds, their red in the velvet formula in particular, really are fantastic. They stay put so well. They've got depth of color. They're definitely one of my favorites, so I cannot resist those. And then the cherry blossom case, which just came back in stock. 
on Guerlain.com along with this beautiful rosy bloom lipstick. I mean, look at that. This would make a fantastic gift for somebody too. You know, you could even buy it now and save it for Mother's Day. But it's just, it's a gorgeous, uh, you know, medium tone pink. I love their satin formula as well. And I think this is just a really great, the case is gorgeous. I did get it to, I, I got it engraved here. So if you are looking for engraving, you can see the mirror down here is where it goes. And I got Dream to Bloom. So really, you know, those are definitely repurchases for me. Next, we have the Givenchy eyeshadow from the Holiday Collection. And this is available now. It kind of came out really late. So I think this is a great set of warm neutrals. Um, I personally don't need this in my collection, so I would probably not pick this up again. It's a little bit warmer than what I use on a regular basis. So I think it's great for somebody who uses warm shades every day as neutrals, really nice palette. You've got a great mix of mattes and soft shimmers. I think the looks are fantastic. So yes, I really like this palette, but considering everything else I have in my collection, it's just not going to be one that I reach for a ton. So for this one, I would pass on this. But again, I think it's a really great option for people who love like warm neutrals, golden shades and so forth. And I think the value is there on this. Next, I tried out the Pinkgasm wand from Charlotte Tilbury for my first time. And I have to say, I really like it. I can see why this is such a popular product. It gives a really gorgeous, you know, pink sheen. And I had no idea when I tried this that the matte ones would be coming out, but I did pick up a couple of those and I am testing those out. I'll have that review up probably next. And uh, yeah, so I have to say, I do really like these. I do find them to be expensive for the amount of product you get with this type of applicator. The applicator works perfectly fine. It's just not something I love. I'd prefer to have it in a different style of packaging personally, but uh, overall, I think it's a really nice product. If you are somebody who is acne prone or you're concerned about hygiene and so forth, I would definitely you know, recommend perhaps actually dabbing this on something sterile like um, you know, a makeup plate or something palette <laughs> so and then dabbing from there instead of putting it directly on your face that's the thing that I, I don't like about this so um yeah i just you know if you put it directly on your face foundation you can get a little foundation there if you've got oh, any germs or bacteria on there obviously you're picking that up so that's not my favorite aspect of it but i think the actual product itself performs really well so would i buy these again yes i would i, I would purchase these again because you know, for me, it's not even just about how much a product costs per se, it's about how much I'm going to use that product. So this is something really easy to use. So it's something that I think I will reach for. On. And then we have these lipsticks from Ada La Beauty. And Ada La Beauty, this is going to be a small brand. It's made in the US and it's like a, you know, an indie startup. This is the red I Am Brave. You can see it's sheer, builds up feels more like one of those, almost like um, not quite a matte lip balm. It doesn't have as dry of a texture as a matte lip balm, but it's drier than a traditional like satin lip balm or anything like that. So it is gonna be a little bit more, it, it's, it is more like a matte lip balm, just a little bit more moisturizing than most of them. And uh, yeah, they've got a few shades. They're sheer, they're buildable. These are made with, you know, fruits and vegetables for the pigments. I think they're really beautiful and I'm really enjoying how they perform. So this is something that I have been reaching for a lot. I would repurchase these again, particularly this shade. This one's my favorite, I Am Brave. Next, we have a couple of mascaras to look at. So first up, the Talika Mascara. So this one here is, um, you know, like a lengthening mascara. It has, you know, all of the different growth peptides and so forth in there. And I would say that this is essentially a dupe of the Chantecaille Longest Lash Mascara. So if you're a fan of that one, you'll probably like this Talika one and it is priced, uh, you know, at, it's a less expensive version. So I think this is a really good alternative to the Chantecaille. So I like this mascara. It's one that, you know, I will use. It's a great like basic mascara. Again, I haven't really worn it enough to note the peptide growth. However, I do, you know, I have a friend who does all of that like lash growth treatment stuff and so forth, and she loves the Talika products. 
and she uses all of those. So she says that they work. So I believe her. <laughs> but um, yeah, this I think is a great alternative to the Shantikai. Now, personally, the Shantikai is not my favorite. I prefer something with a slightly drier formula. And um, yeah, so I would definitely use this again, but it's not gonna go in my top three. However, if the Shantikai is in your top three, I would definitely check this one out as a less pricey alternative to it. Next, we have the Byredo Mixed Emotions Mascara. So this is limited edition and it's this burgundy shade here. You can see that there. I think the color is great. The mascara is nice. I don't think this mascara blows me away in formula. It's really about the color for me. So would I purchase this mascara in another color just for this formula? No, I would not. Um, but if you love color mascaras like I do, I think this is a great one to pick up because this color is unique. You can see there's a little bit of purple and some like red and burgundy in there. And yeah, it's just a little different than the other ones that are currently on the market right now. So do really like this one. And uh, yeah, so I would pick this up again, but only in the limited edition shades. Next we have the Chanel Rouge Allure Velvets. And these are a classic lip product. I have to admit, I've gone through so many lip products this year or this month that I really haven't, you know, been able to go back to these too much. This one here is 64 Eternal. And this is one of my favorites. I really like this shade. Overall, I think this is a solid lipstick formula and it, they've got some really nice colors that they came out with in the Rouge Allure Velvets this year. So would I repurchase? I would. And yeah, I you know, they're, they're a staple. So if you, there are colors that you like there, definitely take a look at them. Next, I also took a look at the Givenchy Silk Intense Lipsticks. And I have to say, I really like the formula of these. They're just a really nice soft satin and I think they are beautiful. You know, they have a subtle luminosity to them. A really great formula. They do have your traditional Givenchy scent, which I know some people love or don't even notice, like me. <laughs> and I mean, I, I notice it's there. It's just, it's very subtle that, you know, I don't notice unless I'm thinking about it. I'm used to it. But other people don't like it. So just take note of that. It is a floral scent to it. But I think it's a really great lip product. Now, this one here is shade 110, which is equivalent to the beige new shade in the velvets. And yeah, now between these and their velvet formulas, I still think Givenchy's velvets, the deep and the sheer velvets are both superior formulas, not only to, you know, I think these silk and tents are great. And I think they're really nice. They fit really well in the market. They didn't do anything wrong. There's just nothing unique or special about that formula compared to how their velvets compare to everything else on the market, if that makes sense. So I, I just think the velvets are a little bit more special, but I do really like these silk intents. Would definitely repurchase and I'm actually looking at purchasing some more shades. Now I do have one issue though. Um, I have like this broken, a broken component and I believe Givenchy is going to replace that for me. I'm discussing it with them through like email and so forth. So I'm waiting to hear back, but it does sound like that they will replace this, but they have certain shades that are refillable. So mine has gotten, it basically, it's this little component in here that is not allowing it to snap in. So then this gets stuck in the case, but it has not destroyed anything on the actual lipstick. So just something to know. And if that happens to you, definitely reach out to their customer service. And yeah, I, I think uh, overall their customer service so far has been helpful. And more lips that I tried are the Clay de Poe Cream Rouge lipstick. This is the one I'm actually wearing right now. It's 206 Caliandra, which is in the, it's in their um, shine version. And let's go ahead and put this one right here. But you can see it's a beautiful mid-tone rose. It's gonna be, a, you know, it leans slightly cool, but not overly cool. I think it's a really versatile shade. I love this formula because it stays shiny on your lips. It doesn't really feel like a lip gloss though. It really feels more like a liquid lipstick, but it's very hydrating, doesn't dry down. And the color stays put fairly well. So, uh, you know, overall, I, I'm really impressed with these. I picked up quite a few of them and I would do it again. While we're on lips, let's continue. We've got the Victoria Beckham in Alter Ego. This is a shade that she came out with right by um, the holidays. I'm just gonna put that right there. So that's Alter Ego. It's, you know, kind of your bright, vibrant pink shade. And I do have comparisons with some popular Lisa Eldridge shades in the video with this, so check that out. And overall, 
I would pick this up again. I love this color. I, you know, it's just such a great vibrant pink and it does lean cool. So, you know, if you have, you know, pretty warm coloring, this shade may not work so well for you, but you know, for me, I really like this one. I like how you've got a blue undertone, but it's not overly blue. And you also see like a little bit of purple in there, but it's really just gonna be a vibrant fuchsia shade. And I just think it's really gorgeous for spring. And next up we have the Jimmy Choo lip gloss. And I have to say, I absolutely love this. You know, it's heavy, by the way. This part is metal, this is plastic here. But I think this is like a really great lip gloss. This is the swatch here of the shade that I picked up, which is called Rose Blush. And this is like kind of your everyday pinky nude shade. But what I love about this is how well it lasts on the lips. Like it's gonna stick around all day. It stays like hydrating, moisturizing on your lips. It's comfortable, it's fantastic. So it's definitely for me a must have lip gloss formula and I'm planning on picking up more, possibly all of the colors when they go on sale at Saks. So they are at Saks now. And uh, yeah, next time they have like a 20% off coupon or 15% off or whatever, I'm going to pick those up. Next, the Hourglass lipsticks. I know a lot of people love these. I just don't love them. Um, you know, I think they're okay. They're an okay cream lipstick. Uh, they do have, you know, a natural scent to them. I don't like this packaging because you have to keep, look, it'll go in this way, but otherwise you have to just kind of keep turning it, which I usually clip them closed when I'm not looking. So that's kind of annoying. And I think the colors run warmer than they look in the promo photos, but I just think that the lipstick itself is okay, so I would not repurchase these. Now, La Bouche Rouge has some great Valentine's Day sets going on right now. I believe these were $79, if I remember correctly, and a case itself, just the case, is $80. Um, so the set to get one of their Valentine's Day shades plus the pink leather case, which is the same as those in the regular line, um, you know, that's a dollar cheaper so than just the case. So I definitely think it's great. If you purchase these from the La Bouche Rouge website, you can pay like $10 to get it engraved if you want, but it makes a really great gift for you or for somebody else. This one here is Red Romance, and this one is my favorite of the three that I picked up. I really love this one, but I have to say, you know, it's my favorite, yet yeah, I'm wearing the the nude one more. So this one here is Blushing Nude, and uh, yeah, I keep wearing this one. So that's Blushing Nude there, but I actually, the Red Romance really speaks to me. And last for the lipsticks, we have the YSL shades for spring, and these are the Rouge Volup Day Shines, and I really, you know, I really like all three of the shades that they came out with this year. So. This one here, this one is 162. I think it's a really beautiful shade. These are kind of your glossy, you know, lip balm, lipstick type thing. And well, let's just go ahead and swatch more. This one here is 161. And then we have 163, which is my favorite right now. And this is kind of your bright pop. So, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying these, particularly 163. Let's take a look at some Armani items. They reformulate the eye tints, which I have to say, I really like, this one here's my favorite. It's number 10 in the Sheer Shimmer formula, and this one's called Senso. And I just really like this. You know, you can really sheer it out, you can build it up. It's a really great formula. I would pick those up again and, you know, I have plenty of liquid eyeshadows right now, so I'll have to wait until I use some of them up or they expire, but I think they are a really great product, great everyday, easy to use shades. I really like this new reformulation. I think it's better than this previous version. Another Armani product that I'm really enjoying is their new shade, number 52, in the Neo Nude Melting Color Balms. And I've been wearing this a lot, you know, probably about once a week. I'm wearing this shade. And yeah, you know, considering my blush size of my collection, uh, yeah, that, that's a lot. So yeah, I'm using this all the time. I love it. Very curious to try this with the new Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm blushes, uh, which are coming out, I believe, on the 8th. So I will definitely pick up one or two of those and compare them with the Givenchy, for, or the Armani formula. 
And then we have the Victoria Beckham uh, eyeliner in Smoky Quartz. Let's just put this up here. That's it. And yeah, this is one of my favorite shades in her eyeliner formula. You can use this, you know, all over the lid and buff that out for an eyeshadow look instead. You don't have to use it just as eyeliner, but really like this. This is, you know, one of the shades that I think will be one of my most used. So it would be a repurchase for me. Here's the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter in Moonlit Glow. I think this is a nice formula. I think it's a nice highlighter. I picked this up on recommendation of some viewers. I think it goes on nicely. It's a little bit more golden though than I would have liked. So honestly, um, I probably would have passed on this just for something a little bit lighter and brighter, um, just because I do have shades that are similar enough already in my collection. But formula wise, I think it's a really nice product. Then we have Manansi 7 items, and this is one of the eye colors. I love this one. This is Ochaya. Now let's just put it here. I think it's a really beautiful one. This does crease though. I don't really love products like that in my eyes. Um, you know, I think it's worth having like one or two products like this for when I'm not really going to wear much makeup or not wear it very long. But, um, you know, the eye version. I don't love the eye version just because of the creasing. It's not my favorite. However, they have the all over colors that you can use as blushes and everything. I really like those. So I would pick up more from the all over color line. I uh, probably, there's still like this taupe shade that I really want in the eye one. So I'll probably pick that one up as well. But other than that, I'll probably stay away from the eye ones and just use some of my other, um, cream eye products over these, but the all over colors I would pick up for blush, contour, you know, any sort of like face cream products where they just perform better for me because, you know, they're not as oily as my lids. Next, we have the Viseart Violetta palette, which I really love this. And I made this smoky eye with it that I really, really kind of liked a lot. <laughs> so uh, I would definitely pick this up again. I think these little quartets from Viseart are a great value. They're great for traveling. This is actually usually something that I do take with me traveling like this size. And this particular color story, I absolutely love. So um, yeah, I would definitely pick this up. If you haven't seen the video with this on it, uh, definitely check it out. It's got a lot of the other products mentioned here. I think the Jimmy Choo gloss is in there and so forth. Really just a great quad. Next we have some Jones Road products. They sent me a set, uh, their new you, no, same you, new year, something like that set. And, um, you know, I got a couple more of the eye pencils, which I had, but I had never paired them with moisturizer directly underneath. You know, I usually do my skincare, let it sit for a little while and then put my makeup on. But with these, you really want to put your moisturizer on and then put the, the crayon on pretty much immediately. Uh, because that helps it glide out and smooth out nicely. So I think these are nice. Um, I think it's good to have something like this on hand, good for traveling and so forth, but it's not gonna be an everyday product for me. I've been using this from Jones Road quite a bit. This was in the set as well. This is their Shimmer Face Oil in Pink Opal. And I've been using this underneath foundation quite a, a lot, but you can also put this on, you know, kind of as like a highlight and so forth. Uh, I know that's probably kind of small and hard to see, but I'm running out of space here. But I really, I really like this face oil and putting this on and using the crayons really was helpful as well. So um, yeah, that that is definitely, you know, something I would pick up again. All right, and we are almost done. Uh, we have the Chantecai Spring Collection, which I'm actually wearing uh, the eyeshadow and the, the what's the, the apple blossom blush right now and yeah you know I think it's a nice nice blush but it's I like the Chantecaille collection I think it's really beautiful I think the colors are nice but my only complaint is I just don't think that it's necessarily worth the cost of full price would I pick this up at full price again no would I pick this up on sale yes uh, I love the packaging. So honestly, you know, I, I would pay full price for like one or two items from the collection just because I love the packaging. But this entire collection itself, like I was really excited for the blushes, but they're just a, a 
traditional powder formula. I actually like the Philanthropy Cheek Shade powder formula better from them than this one. I find this to be, you know, nothing special formula wise. I think the colors are nice. The two shades though are a little bit more similar to each other than I expect it. Online, they make them look more, they look a little bit more different than they are in person. So I do really like these, um, but for the price point, I don't find them to be worth it personally. Um, but the collection is a very nice collection. The eyeshadow quad, I like the eyeshadow quad. You know, the lips, really like the lips. I mean, look at this packaging, it's really beautiful. So yeah, you know, I, I would pick up a few of these pieces on their own, even full price, but the whole collection itself, I would pick up on sale but I just think that um, the quality of the, the textures and the formulas don't quite meet that price point for me. Uh, but the color stories are beautiful. And then we have Suku Spring. So this is our, our last item. I am still waiting for the rest of my Suku. These were the items that were actually gifted to me, but I purchased the remainder of the collection. There has been an issue with my order, so I don't know when it's going to arrive. It seems to be kind of hopefully not missing per se, but it is kind of st stuck in transport somewhere. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but hopefully it won't get lost and I'll be able to get all of the items I ordered. But you know, overall, I think it's a great collection. I think a lot of other people like it too because unfortunately everything is selling out like immediately, the blushes in particular. So I really hope that they restock those or bring some of these shades back permanently, but I would definitely pick these up. I think Suku is, you know, uh, it's definitely one of the best brands on the market. Obviously they do have issues with like launches and so forth and, you know, just product availability because they are still a smaller brand. But hopefully, you know, in the future, they will be able to expand. Things will be a little bit easier to get because I think their quality is more consistent than other major brands and their quality is superior <laughs> most of the time. So, you know, I just think that they are a really quality makeup brand and I can't wait to see more from them, but I will definitely continue purchasing the Suku items because they are true favorites. All right, so top five for the month. Let's go ahead and do this. So we've got the Jimmy Choo lip gloss, definitely in my top five. The Armani Neo Nude Melting Color Balm in 52. Again, I can't stop reaching for this. The Viseart Violetta Palette, uh, you know, I love that. Also the Armani Eye Tint in number 10 in the Sheer Shimmer Finish. I really love this finish. Um, so definitely a must have for me. And then we have the new Suku Treatment Wrapping Lip Gloss. And this one here is shade five. And this here is shade five. I mean, you can see it's definitely one of my favorite shades here. But yeah, I love this formula. And this is a permanent item. I have to admit, it was really hard doing the top five right now because of course there were other items I really wanted to include like some of the brushes or the Guerlain lipsticks and so forth. But my top five, uh, you know, those are the first five items I would go and repurchase from this month's items. And that's, you know, based on everything that I have currently in my collection, what I'm reaching for a lot right now. So really love that. And I do want to just give a shout out to the Say Hydro Beam Concealer because I have reviewed this on my channel like months back when it came out and I'm still loving this and wearing this almost every day. You know, I use this at least half the time and you know, I, yeah, this is HB1 by the way, but I really just love this concealer. So just wanted to share so thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know what you've been reaching for this month, any favorites or fails that you've had or any recommendations you have for me. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful and please hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Thank you so much and I will see you very soon. Have a great day.